Thank you. you. may be seated. Turn to Genesis chapter number 12. I fear that even the best Christian homes, to some degree, if not a great degree, I I can't hear me. Turn turn me up. Turn me up. My wife said, honey, it used to make blood come out of their ears when you talk. Now they don't even flinch. Turn that up. I fear that most families, uh, even considered to be good Christian families, have got so many things out of order, we're we're not even aware of it. Um, For instance, let's just talk about the order of a home. Nowadays, in most homes, everything's about the children. We sacrifice for the children. We set things aside for the children. We make a way for the children. The children come first. We need to pay attention to the children. The children need the food first. The children need this first. Uh, That's backwards. Then we have the woman. She's smarter than anybody in the house. She has more say-so than anybody in the house. Uh, She runs most things. And she's free to give her advice because she knows what needs to be done. Let's assume she does know. She's out of order. Then the man, he's too busy. He doesn't read. He doesn't study. He doesn't guide. He doesn't live with his wife according to knowledge. He has no idea really what to do with kids. And now, right now, while I'm talking, you're going like, yes, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. And, uh, and so this is what we've done. Now, what I'm getting ready to teach you, to some of you, you've heard back maybe when you were teenagers from Brother Hiles. That's where I first heard it. And I thought, hmm, never heard that before. Now, if I, don't, if I don't misunderstand the Bible, in this area, I know I don't. I thought the Bible said the head of Christ is God. We don't have a problem with that except trying to figure out they're one and the same, so how can one be? Yeah, that's a problem. He's simply setting an order, okay? And then the head of the man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. He's setting an order. I don't read anything about kids. Except train up a child in the way they should go. Children obey your parents. We got this whole thing all mixed up, especially when it comes to the, because we want to be gentler, kinder, fundamentalist, we actually are telling people that men and women that are married are on equal terms. That Some of you look at me right now like, oh, where's this going to? Abigail, I expect you to amen. Okay, now, and uh, what we see here is what I'm getting ready to read to you and help you to understand. Oh, that's so fast. And nobody really does that anymore, as though that made it right. There's a lot of things that we do that we have substituted for Bible because it really doesn't fit anymore. It doesn't fit because we won't make it fit. It does fit. So I want you to turn to Genesis chapter number 12. I want to talk to you about Abraham and Sarah, or Abram and Sarai, okay? You've heard it, and it is true to a degree that behind every spiritual successful man, or even successful man, there is a faithful, successful spiritual woman behind him. And I believe that's true in most cases. The Apostle Paul would be an exception, I believe, to that rule. Uh, because as far as we know, you need to quit listening to people say, well, history says in order to be on the Sanhedrin court, you had to be married and had to have a family. That's fine. I'm all for that. I just don't read it in the Bible. And so if Paul did, it doesn't say anything about it. Okay? And so as far as we know, Paul was not married, regardless of what history says. If history agrees with the Bible, I like it. If it tends to disagree or fill in the blanks that God decided not to fill in, 
I tend to have shy away from that. Okay. So what we have here is we decide behind every godly faithful man, we say there is a godly faithful woman, and I believe that. When God calls a married man off to go to school, which is what used to happen all the time, uh, Mrs. Weaver would remember that. I remember that. Some of you older people that way back in your day that went off to a Bible college, it wasn't teenagers going. It was whole families going. And Dad was called to go off. He didn't know why. He simply dropped everything and said, we're getting ready to move. And the wife and everybody went, why? He said, because. And they all packed up and they moved. And that's just the way it be. That's what they used to do. So what happens here is this. Even though, okay, your pastor, me, uh, same thing here. God did not call my wife. Now, here's what we say. Well, if God calls you, he called your wife. Doesn't that sound good? You know what I'm getting ready to do, right? Show me the Bible for that. Now, you'll say, well, just like Sarah with Abraham, she went with him. She followed Abraham. God did not call her. God did not call you, ma'am. God calls men. I told you this is going to... Okay. We forget, though, that men that are called, that are married, their wife goes with them. Okay? You have to remember, though, there was a Mrs. Noah on that boat. And for 120 years, she listened to her husband preach, and nobody responded. She was there. She had those three boys. And the trouble is, we lose sight of her after the flood, like she wasn't around anymore. Whether she was or not, I don't know. But if she was, Ham and Canaan, she was there for that too. You understand? There also was a Mrs. Job. We know that, right? And the Bible makes one statement about her, and other than that, it make another statement. One statement. And it was bad, right? During all of that lifetime. She was there for all of that. She goes through all of that tragedy and makes one statement, and that's the only thing the Bible mentions. God told Satan, Hast thou considered not my servants, Mr. and Mrs. Job? God is always after leadership. God works through leadership, not fellowship. Fellowship follows, fellowship, get it? Follows leader. God always works through a leader to bless his people or a nation or whatever the case may be. There was a Mrs. Aiken, and it wasn't her fault. Her husband was a knucklehead. I still like to know why God called him that. Anyway, so man should obey God no matter what. And here's where we begin to break ties with the Lord. The Lord calls the man to do something, and he begins to talk it over with his wife, and she begins to reason. Honey, how are we going to do this? What about the kids? What if we can't do this? Are you sure about that? What if this doesn't work out? Are you sure we can? And on and on and on. So the next thing he does, he starts praying and trying to talk his wife into what God taught him to do. So guess what happens to a lot of men? They don't go off to school. They don't pastor a church. They don't leave their job. They don't follow the Lord. They don't go into the mission field because their wife put her foot down and reasoned him right out of God's will. This is what's, look at me, this is what's going to happen to some of the kids in this room. Because of the way that I preach, listen to me now, because of the way that I preach and challenge people to do what God wants them to do and go out for the Lord, some of these little ones right now God's talking to, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the parents who do not want their children or their husband. Listen to me now. Quiet. Listen. So what happens here is simply this. We do not find out throughout biblical history when God called a man for service that God talked it over with his wife. Nor his children. We do not find out where he went. Not only did God not do it, we don't find out where the man went and talked to his wife about it. Show me. You won't find it. Now, if we're Bible believers, not Bible reasoners, Bible believers, God called a man to do a work, and that was the end of the story. Wife either went along with it or she didn't, and the man went on. Kind of like David with Michelle. 
Remember she threw a fit because he was dancing with all the people, having a great time, brought the Ark of the Covenant back. She got jealous, got upset about the whole thing. He tried to reason with her. Remember the final outcome? He never touched her again. See, men won't do that. He simply said, okay, I'll never touch you again. He didn't. He didn't. She went childless from that time on. He, he was not with her anymore. So I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's what he did. God did not ask Sarai for advice, nor did Abraham or Abram seeking the advice of Sarah, should we follow the Lord? But see, in America and around the world, we have been taught, well, you're married. You need to talk this over with her. I, I hate to keep doing this. And when we hear somebody that does it that way, it's so strange. What did your wife think about that? Well, I can tell you what my wife did, but our, our example and our, our um, uh, situation is not in the Bible. And I did pray, God, if I just knew my wife was for this. Now, I don't know why God did this, and I don't know why my wife said that. I was going to go. I was just fussing on how it was going to work. And when my wife said, honey, whatever you decide, I said, we're moving. That's it, in the story. He said, what about the kids? Didn't ask them. Pack it up, and most of the stuff we're leaving behind because we don't have room for it. Six people and two dogs within a 15-foot panel van. That was it. And we took off. So God asked me to do something for him, and the same thing with Abram. The man is to follow and su- Look at me, fellas. The man is to follow and submit to God. The woman is to submit and follow the man. Now, here's where we begin to split hairs again. Yeah, but what if, what if he doesn't understand? What if he hasn't considered this is why you're not the leader on a lot of different levels? Just like in the garden. I still would like to know why Sarah made a statement to someone or something she just met and never talked it over with Abraham at all. Uh, Abraham. Adam at all. He married Abraham, right? And uh, at all. But she just didn't do it and got everybody into trouble. Go to Hebrews chapter number 11. Let's start there. Hebrews chapter number 11, way up in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter number 11. The wife is to follow and submit to her husband. In Hebrews chapter 11, there is no mention of the wife in this. Now watch what happens. Hebrews chapter number 11, down in verse number 8. Hebrews 11 and verse number 8. This is the faith chapter. Now, it's not that Sarah's not mentioned in here, but later on she's mentioned and how she applied her faith. Had nothing to do with God calling Abraham. Watch in verse number 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place that he should after receive, should after receive for an inheritance, what did he do? He obeyed. And he went out not knowing what... Now, that will make a wife nervous. Well, I didn't, I didn't, Bob didn't say she wasn't nervous. She wasn't, she, I don't get it. I mean, how are we going to... But that's not the point. Watch what happens. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of, with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city uh, which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. No mention of Sarah. However, next verse. Through faith, Sarah, now we're talking about her area. Having kids. Don't you hate that? Barefoot, pregnant, in the kitchen. I'm glad we're having a generation of young ladies growing up that want to have children, want to take care of their children, want to love their husband and take care of the home. And it just chafes people the wrong... How can you do that? You know, you could have so much more for your family if you got a job. You have a job, man. Somebody just told me the other day, said, you know, my husband has a job and I stay home with the kids, like six of them, and I'm going, uh, you work for a living quite a bit. And by the way, that is your area, and you need to take care of that area. Abraham's job was to go out and follow God and whatever that may cost. He had to pay that. Well, I'm his wife. I'd have to pay for that too. That's what you get for getting married. Till death do us part? Better or worse? Remember those vows? Oh, you, I know. At the time, you meant for good, riches, health, right? All, all the good side. It's like my wife said, honey, when I married you, 
you weren't a preacher. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? I didn't marry a preacher. Okay, I get it. Now, so what happens here is look at down verse number 10. He said, for he looked for a city. So Abraham obeys the Lord and what? Because God talked to Abraham of what he wanted him to do. Okay, uh, I better stick with this. There's no mention of the wife. But from the account in Genesis chapter number 12, when you read chapter, you find out that Sarah went with him. The family went with him. Lot went with him. Other people went with him. But you find out she went along with it. By the way, everything God was talking about Abraham, to a land he didn't know, she didn't know either, to a place that's going to be foreign, was for her too. Everything he had to face, she had to face. The only difference is God never called her, he called him. Lady, you are there for your husband. Again, I'm using the United States as a backdrop, and all of this generation after generation of anti-Bible teaching concerning the home has got us to where now we don't send out mission. American missionaries are getting less and less all the time. You know why? We ain't suffering from nobody. And it's not that God, I don't believe God's not calling men. Wives are not letting them be called. My personal opinion. Who did Sarah? Abraham followed, obeyed, and walked with God in the way he wanted him to go. Who did Sarah follow? I want you to go to First Peter chapter number three. Now see, every everything I, I can smell the wood burning. Okay, as you're thinking, you know, blockhead. Uh, I can smell that. And what's going on is this: you're thinking of all the re- yeah, but what if? Well, what if he doesn't? Okay, okay. Abraham and Sarah ran in the same problems. He made some bad decisions, and she was there. And then she made some bad decisions, and he was there. Okay. Can I ask you this? How is your husband, the boy you married, that you thought the time was a man, how is he ever supposed to learn if you keep being his mother? You're smarter than him. You bail him out of trouble. You talk him in and out of things. You have more reasoning than he does, more wisdom than he'll ever have. He should have just stayed home with mom. And if God called him, God has to go through the operator to get to him. That would be you. Go to First Peter chapter number three. First Peter chapter number three. You're there, and I'm not. First Peter chapter number three. I want you to look down in verse number five. For after this manner, um, let's go to verse four. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God, not the world, not your mom, not your relatives, not most Baptists anymore, sight of God is a great price. Verse 5, for after this manner, in old time, see God never tells us to imitate the future. He warns us about the future and tells us to imitate the past. For after this manner, in old time, the holy women, not holiness women, also who trusted in God, adorned themselves being, what they adorned themselves with, being in subjection unto their own husbands. That's an ornament of great beauty. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. That's what my wife calls me when we're at home. She said, honey, what would you like to have for dinner? I said, ah, bacon, eggs, and some biscuits and stuff like that. She goes, yes, my Lord. And uh, that's just what we do. And so, because she wants to be like Sarah. So, what's he say here? Whose, whose daughters ye are. Don't miss this. Now he's bringing it up to us. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. She may have had all the doubt in the world, but she followed her husband. She had no idea where they're going any more than Abraham did. He said, I'm sure that's what God wants. Okay, honey, that's what you think. The problem is, we say we trust God. Okay, then trust God to follow your husband, like God said. But we don't. 
We don't trust our husband, and we don't trust God. We say we do, but we really don't on this level anyway. What happens, remember, if God called Abraham, he can do this no matter what the circumstances. God does not call and say, you know, I thought about that. Ooh, boy, are we stuck. Well, go ahead, shoot your wife, start over again. I don't know what to tell you. God doesn't do that. God already knew he had a wife, already knew what children he had, already knew Lot was with him, already knew what was going to happen in Haran. God knows everything and said, Abraham, leave it all and follow me. God knows you have the best job you've ever had in your life. And when God calls you away, the first thing that's going to enter in your mind are the material things of your life and your wife and kids. Which goes to show you, to all of us, what is the dearest thing we consider when things begin to change? Wife, job, and kids. Well, I can't just leave my job. Why not? What are we going to do? Uh, what, what do we uh, trust the Lord? Oh, boy, has it come to that? I don't know. If God calls you. What happens here is this. God specifically made woman to complete the man, not to guide him, to complete him. Go to Genesis chapter number 2. Genesis chapter number 2. I don't know if word got out on what I was talking about. There's just a lot of people missing tonight. So, But those of you that are here, pay attention to me. Anyway, Genesis chapter number 2. Look at verse number 18. Ma'am, I'm going to show you now God's original intent for why he created you to begin with. Abraham was hugely intelligent. Abraham walked with God. Abraham was perfect. Abraham had a perfect home. Why in the world did he need you? Or Adam, what did I say? Stuck on that Abraham thing. So Miss Emma comes along and... Why, why in the garden did he need a woman? Not to be his helpmate, or helpmeet, to be his, not to be a helpmate. It's, a, it's not a hyphenated word. It's help meet for Adam. That's exactly what it said. A help perfect for Adam. Who did God make first? Adam. Why not the woman? Because that's what God did. And God made him the head and not the follower. We go over to, to uh, Peter, I believe it is, and it tells us why that is. So, watch what happens here. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, And the Lord said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Not a help mate. A help meet for him. Like a right glove for a right hand, a left glove for a left hand, and a pair of shoes. This one goes up. You always tell your kids, wrong feet. Start tearing married couples. Uh, wrong position. You two need to switch. You need to be quiet, and he needs to talk. He needs to lead, and you need to follow. Well, you can look at them. <laughs> Ladies, listen to me. The, the, the greater God is going to use your husband. The greater he's going to use your husband, the greater faith the woman has got to have to follow him. Because a lot of stuff he's going to do is like, oh, honey, just how are we going to make ends meet? You know what he's going to say? I don't know. You know what faith is? Faith is not saying, yeah, I see our way through. If we do this, this, and this, and then that will work out and we'll be able to do that. That's not faith. You don't need God. You've got it all figured out. So he turns to his wife and goes, I don't know, get a job when we get there, I guess. That'd make you nervous, wouldn't it? Back in the day, Mrs. Weaver, that's what men did. Packed up the family, shoved them all into a van or in a pickup truck somewhere, took what they thought they could survive on, and went to follow the Lord. Not considering whether it would work or not. God called me and said, we need to do that. And many of the women had doubts and fears just like everybody else, but their end conversation was, okay, that's what you think. But we've changed. So what happens here is, go to John chapter number 15. Can I ask you a 
I'll call a hypothetical question right now. Go to John chapter number 15. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John chapter number 15. I'm talking to the ladies tonight, okay? But actually, fellas, I'm talking to you. I, I have a biblical theory. If men were the men they were supposed to be, more ladies would yield and give in. So the problem isn't the woman so much. The problem is the man. When a man is balanced and following God as he should, doesn't mean they'll be trouble free. We'll find that out here in a minute. It just means that everything that he learns and adjusts to sooner, not when you first get married, not the first five or so years, but after a while you go like it. Uh, he always figures out he'll, he'll, he'll be okay. He's always taking care of us. We'll be okay. Oh, we'll get through it somehow. We always did. We'll be okay. You want that the first day you get married. Hey, I'm the husband. So you got a title. That's all you've got is a title. You haven't earned a thing yet. The way that you get people to trust you is over time, you give them reason to trust you. If we could get men to be Christian men, most women, you ever, you ever listen to Miss Colleen? Talk about her husband. He's the smartest man that's ever lived. He can do anything. He knows everything. He can handle everything. Socks is the biggest cheerleader I've ever met in my life. It's not just about her husband. She's a cheerleader for everybody. You can do this. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, don't you just love it? I mean, I'm thinking, okay, calm down. It's okay. I'm nobody's cheerleader. That's your problem, honey, right there. Okay? Unless it's for you. So what happens here is this. Would you say, ma'am, listen to me carefully. Would you say that the Holy Spirit is not important? That'd be foolish, wouldn't it? Would you say that the Holy Spirit somehow is less than Jesus Christ or God himself? No. No. He has a different position, a different work. But he's not less. We, do we all agree with that so far? Okay. I want you to look in John chapter 15, verse 26. John 15, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, this is Jesus saying, look, when I go away... I'm going to send someone, just like me, just like me. He will come and he'll teach you everything you need to know. Now go to chapter 16 and verse number 13. He explains a little more here. Ready? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, now we know who we're talking about, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Hmm. But whatsoever he heareth, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So when the Charismatics start talking more about the Holy Spirit than Jesus Christ, which they do all the time, something's wrong. I've never seen the Holy Spirit. Anybody? No, please don't raise your hand. No. Anybody seen the wind? Yeah, it's really blowing today. No, you saw the effects of the wind. Very real, but you didn't actually see the wind. You saw the effects of the wind. Man, that's supposed to be you in a manner of speaking. The Holy Spirit, by your own admitting, is not less than the Father. It just has a different job, if you would. Jesus said when he comes, he'll not be speaking of himself. He's not drawing attention to himself. He's not talking about how good he is, how great he is, even though he is. Even though he is. He has a job to do, and that job is to bring Glory to someone else. Because he speaks of Jesus and points people to Jesus, what's he, is he less important? No, not less important at all. Just different ministry. This is the part that this world has talked you out of. What, what are you, less than a man? No. You're different. You're different. Man, I don't know whether you notice this or not. You're different. By design, you cannot be equal. 
by creation, you were never supposed to be equal. And when you stand up for your rights and to be equal, you are totally out of the will of God. Totally out of the will of God. Can you see the Holy Spirit? No, you cannot. Is the Holy Spirit to receive glory or point people to Jesus? Point people to Jesus. Would you say the Holy Spirit is less important than Christ? No, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? And every one of them have their, if you would, particular work they're supposed to be doing. You were made to be a help meet for your husband. Without the Holy Spirit, it would be much harder to serve the Savior. True? Because he leads and guides and comforts and does all those wonderful things, right? It can be done. In the tribulation, it will be done. In the Old Testament, it was done a lot. But we have the Holy Spirit now, right? So if you if you would, the Holy Spirit of the home. Sir, you can serve the Lord, and if the Lord called, you better do it. Now, it would be much easier if she went along with you and was a helpmeet to you. But you can do it, even without it. And this is where Matthew chapter 10 comes in, when the Lord calls you to follow him, and you put ahead of him wife, son, daughter, in-laws, some other relationship, and God says this, you're not worthy of your calling. And in our heads right now, we're still making excuses. I know I've talked to people constantly about stuff like this all the time. So what happens is, ladies, you are not less important by a long shot. God created, watch it. What would you think of a hippo trying to act like a mountain lion? You say, that's stupid. That'll never happen. God did not make you a man, lady. He made you special for the man. But you have been talked into but that's not right. I'm just as good as he is. No, ma'am, you're not. You're better. God said, I made a perfect creation, but something's missing. Let me see. I'll make a woman. That was actually the crowning part to everything. And you get all upset because God said, I'm going to work through the man. Well, that doesn't seem right to me. He didn't ask your opinion. Just like when your husband is called to full-time service or to give himself more to God, there is no way in the world he needs to get your permission. Or the children's permission. Well, what if they leave? I cannot begin to tell you the men that I've lost from this church because their wife put down their foot and said it's either that church or me. And they left. I get blamed for it. What did the preacher do wrong? I have a better question. Go ask them. Why didn't you follow the Lord and do what was right? So, you just hold a different position. Just as the Holy Spirit is very important... Yet he points people to Jesus, not himself. When Christ receives glory, the Holy Spirit is satisfied. Why? Because that was his job. He did what God told him, if you would, told him to do. Ma'am, when you, you, you... Do you know why I can do everything I do? First of all, God called me and it has to be done. But it's a whole lot easier when my wife fits perfectly the way she's supposed to. You say, well, she's going through it, too. I know that. Well, she has to face things, too. First of all, I don't go home and whine to my wife about everything going wrong at work. That's what little children do. Grown guys, listen to me. That's what little boys do. <laughs> I get a boo-boo. What are we going to do? Kiss it. Grown men taking their job, their work, their whining home to their wife. And then when she throws a hissy fit, you're going, what's your problem? You. You're the problem. You're not supposed to. You have your area. She has hers. The Holy Spirit is a major part of Christianity. And we can see his effects on everything he does. He cannot be seen, but we can see all the effects. This is what happens in a family. When you see children being trained right and know how to dress and know how to react and talk to other people, you're seeing a mom for the most part. Why? Dad's at work. He has to. That's what God made him to do. So when mom and children turn against dad, that's mom too. That doesn't just happen. That's taught. 
The guy goes to work all the time, and he goes, Mom, why didn't Daddy ever hear? I don't know. He's at work all the time. He never comes home. Ma'am, you messed up. You thoroughly messed up. What you should have said was something like this. Hey, 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 your daddy works hard for us. He brings home groceries and pays our bills, the clothes you got on, because he loves us, and don't I don't ever want to hear you say that. And then beat the fire out of him for even bringing it up. He's not seen. He draws no attention to himself. Sarah followed Abraham, and we hardly ever hear anything about God talking to her, except when it comes to children and the home and following Abraham. Is anybody, you're not even writing this down. You're just smiling like, oh, we're going to do this all night? Yeah. So what happens here is, remember, Sarah also left everything behind, and that's true. Man, you got married. Though he married into your family and you married into his, he did not marry your family. Listen to me, all you new, newlywed people. Listen up. You did not marry the family. The family has no control over you. You should submit to wisdom and experience if it's Bible-based. But when interference comes, look, ma'am, you don't, well, what was I supposed to say? You go like, yes, that's fine with me if you talk over my husband. That's where, that's where Eve messed up with, what's the guy's name? Abraham, thank you very much. Because she didn't ask her husband. She thought I had to make a decision, and she messed up. And this is what happens a lot today. Number two, here's something you've got to understand. Even men and women of faith have problems and troubles. You, you think you have a great marriage because everything goes right. What are you going to do when something goes wrong? How do you know you're going to have a great marriage until it's been tried? How do you know the guy's a great soldier until he's been in a battle? How do you know a guy is a great business person until he's able to build a business and say, look what I've done? We don't know. And so the same thing with faith. Go to Genesis chapter number 12. Genesis chapter number 12. You, you, you didn't know all this in the Bible, did you? Genesis chapter number 12. We find out here in Genesis chapter number 12, I'm not going to read all this for the sake of time, but in Genesis chapter 12, 11 through 20, we know the problems that happened here. God called Abraham to follow him, and guess what happened? Famine hit. Who knew? Look up here. Who knew tough times were coming? Who knew that a famine was coming? Who knew that they'd be in the middle of the desert and Egypt wasn't that far away and would be a temptation. He knew. So what happens? We come to find out here, Abraham was to follow God wherever he took him. Yeah, we're in this desert, and how are we going to eat? Did God, are you sure God called you? Okay, keep following God. If you die in God's will, can you imagine when you get to heaven what God's going to say? Well done. You know why? His son did that. His son, Jesus Christ, died in the will of God. And God was very pleased. Isaiah chapter number 53, 2, whatever. Okay? That's what you have to understand. So what you see here is going on here. Abraham takes a detour away from the direction God told him to go. Guess who had to go with him? His wife. See, ma'am, this is what you're afraid of. What if he makes a bonehead decision? You mean a bonehead decision. He'll make a lot of them. We're very famous for that. Because most of us did not, most of you did not marry men. You married boys. Part of your job, man, ma'am, is to help him learn to be the man God wants him. Not control him, straighten him out and preach to him. That's not your job. That's my job. That's my job. Every time you skip... Don't skip Sunday morning be talking about men. You get you get that lazy guy up, you get him here. Okay? Well, he worked all night. Get him up and get him here. So we find out here that you know the story. Off he goes to where? Egypt. God didn't call him to go to Egypt. God called him to go to Canaan land. He didn't tell him where that was, but Egypt was not in the equation. So he takes off and goes down. I mean, what are you supposed to do? We need to eat. What are you supposed to do to provide for your family? Got to get a job. 
Might as well move to California. Might as well go to Florida. Hey, I hear there's jobs in Texas. Where did God call you to? At the first sign of trouble or struggle, we think it's time to move. We think it's time to change direction. Do you know what happened to the Anchor Baptist Church if I did that? I'd have restarted Anchor Baptist Church about five million times. There's always struggle. There's always, just because Mrs. Bell and I are together and we look like we're just the face of glory, I bet nothing goes wrong with them. Nothing. Never has, never will. It's just the way things are. You have to understand, the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. The sun shines on the just as well as the unjust. When people are living for God, they're going to run into trouble. Quit living, quit living in a fantasy world. We're not on the yellow brick road. We're not going to Oz, the land of plenty. We're not going there. Canaan land is not heaven. So what happens? Here's this. While following God, a famine hits, and they run into problem. Abraham took a detour. He should not have done that. Sarah did not try to guide her husband. Honey, remember what God said. He'll show us the land. We shouldn't take a detour right here. Never said a word. That's scary, isn't it? That's scary. So here's where we begin to add to Bible. Well, you know she's bound to have said something. She may have, but the Bible doesn't say. I do know the parts the Bible does say. She followed Abraham because that was what she was supposed to do. He was to follow God, and that's not what he did. He got the family in trouble by not following God. God will take care of him. Here's a girl like this. He doesn't know the first thing about finances, preacher. What in it was I? I've, I've, I've helped handle whole businesses. Okay? How's she ever supposed to learn if mom keeps taking care of everything? Again, maybe you shouldn't have left home. Maybe she'd still be living in mommy's basement, letting her take care of all your problems. There's a big problem with that, though. You'll never learn how to be a man. You'll never learn how to handle problems. You'll never learn how to follow God because you're letting her take leadership whenever you don't know what to do. Look, you can do things in a bad way, I'm sorry, in a, in a lesser way till you learn how to do it right. You know how you get experience? By messing up a lot. Even if you listen and obey everything everybody tells you, you there's going to be some things you're just not going to get. This is what we're hoping with our kids. If we do everything just right, we teach them just right, they won't have to go through any of this. You do know they're not angels, right? You do know they're not robots. You do know that they're going to have to, when they get older, learn how to walk and trust God by faith, just like you had to do. We're trying to be God in their life. You're only that till you hand them off. End of what you you had your opportunity. Now it's done. Did you teach them to trust God? Did you teach them by example and illustration of your position in life how to teach your girls what they're supposed to do? Sir, did you teach your boys, hey, life's just tough sometimes. Suck it up, buddy. Let's go to work. Well, honey, I understand. Go talk to mommy. We're way overprotecting our kids. And I don't mean from sin. I mean from tough times, hard work, character lessons. They're going to have to learn or they're going to fall flat on their face. Sarah did not try to guide and direct her husband, even though, even if she thought it was wrong. There's no mention of that. This is God's job. This is God's job. Ladies, you have a hard enough time trying to live in the will of God where God puts you. The hardest person in the world to control is yourself. That's why we want to control everybody else. Kids want to do what they want to do and tell mom and dad what to do. The wife wants to run the family. The husband just wants to watch sports and go to sleep. Everybody wants to do what they're not supposed to do. Piano player wants to be a deacon. Deacons want to be preachers. Preachers just want to go to Maui and call quits. Everybody wants to do what they're not supposed to do. By you getting out of God's will for your life, ma'am, will never help the situation. Actually, it will only multiply and complicate the situation. Why? Because now I've got two people. Abraham went to Egypt. Uh, Sarah decides to run the family. Now we've got two people out of God's will. How in the world God's going to help with that at all? Well, if he'd just listen to me, ma'am, he's not supposed to. Look, if he yields to listen to you, that's one thing. When the Bible said submit you one to another, submit is something that leadership yields to. 
okay, I'll allow you to do that. I'm yielding to you. Go ahead. Yep, yep. You can help me. Fine. That doesn't mean somebody says, I have a suggestion. Most people's suggestion is really a command. I have an idea. In other words, you better do this. And can I at least say something? You mean you want me to do what you just said? Right? By you getting out of God's will and not help. If Abraham would have listened to Sarah, he may have, he may have, he may have saved himself some trouble. He may have. But he may have never learned what to do when troubles come in your life. I'm not saying going down to Egypt was right. I think it was wrong. What are you going to do the next time trouble comes? Famine comes. Hardships come. Bail out. Leave Canaan. Leave the will of God. Well, we did it before. Hey, we survived. And this is the way a lot of people face life. He needs to learn to trust God. The next time a major decision needs to be made and he asks his wife for advice, guess what happened? Anybody remember? He had this handmaid. She did. By the name of Hagar. And she said, honey... God made a promise. Now, I, I, I want us to be in God's will. But we're getting old. We keep messing around with this. We have nothing in the kids' college fund. The kids have never played sports. I mean, what's wrong with that? It's all according. Is that Sunday? Soul winning time? Yeah. Thursday night? When is that? Yeah. Some of you get wrapped up in this way too much, like your kids going to be superstars. Yeah. How much have you talking about the will of God no matter what? Let's be here Sunday morning. I'm preaching on men. Ladies, if I say I trust God only as long as I understand Him to obey Him, would that be right? You say, preacher, that's not the way you follow the Lord. That's not the way you're supposed to follow your husband. Well, how am I supposed to do what He says? It doesn't make sense. Because God said it. God said you follow me and Do, ma'am, don't you trust your husband? Hold on, I didn't say was he perfect. I said, don't you trust him? So if he doesn't trust God, that's okay? You don't trust the person you're supposed to obey and submit to. He doesn't either. That's kind of equal, right? We're all for equal rights. Later, Abraham listened to his wife instead of trusting God. And boy, did trouble come into the family. You can find that out in Genesis chapter number 15, 16. God had promised Abraham, look, Abraham, I'm giving you my word. You're going to have a promised seed. Sarah laughed about it. Abraham didn't believe it. But God made the promise. However, 25 years went by, no kid. Sarah says, look, God made a promise. We can help. Like, God's getting old. He needs some help, you know. Maybe he wants us. Maybe this is what he wants us to do. No, he said, one, miraculous birth. One born, if you would, out of due time. I look, Abraham, you're 90 years old. You're going to have a kid? Seriously? We were in uh, Honduras and went to see the um, Tulipan Indians. I think I told you this before. The chief there was like 112 years old or something, some ridiculous age. He had a son that was like five or eight years old. Now, if you were there with Brother Nelms, it, just, it was hilarious. But anyway... <laughs> He had multiple wives along the way. Not God's idea. A lot of people think they have a good idea. Your reasoning makes human sense, but God does not rarely go by human sense. When you start following God, most of the stuff He says, you go, yeah, it makes sense. But until you've learned to do that, you're going to fight a hundred and some thousand people with 300 men. Right. So what are our weapons? What? 
a lamp, a pitcher, and a trumpet. Okay. Well, I'm not doing this until I understand what's going on. You would have been a part of that. I'm going to go around the biggest city you're ever going to face, and you're not going to fire a shot. Well, how are we going to do this then? We're just going to march every day. You know what we said? I'm not doing that. Man, we're just asking to get killed. It's what you do to your husband when you say, I can't go along with that. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about, I believe God wants us to. I just don't see it. I didn't ask him. And if I did, and you have a difference of opinion, I have to go this way. I have to. So what happened here is we find out that, by the way, Hagar produced the Arabs. Isaac produced the Jews. Anybody see a problem with this? It's never stopping. This is what's going on in the world right now. It's not about white America. That's what's getting blamed right now. It's not about us at all. It's about the Arabs and the Jews. Always has been. Always will be. We have a space and time called the times of the Gentiles. Other than that, what's the big deal? So we find out you have air. This is what Abraham did by listening to his wife. And it made sense. Honey, we're getting old. And God promised. What's it going to hurt to help? Made sense. He fell for it. God didn't mention one thing about that. God specifically told him, Sarah will have a son. Not Hagar. And look at the mess that God has sent you. Abraham and Sarah are both in the faith chapters in Hebrews. Abraham for following God and doing, and her for following Abraham and obeying what God told her to do. Sarah became the example of submission and faithfulness to her husband. Abraham became the, sub, the example of submission, the father of the faithful. Sir, that's your job. God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to act? Which way do you want me to turn? How should I handle this problem? So the kids step. You mean you tell me I'm going to leave my school and all of my friends? You be quiet and do what you're told. See, we even fuss with God. Well, I just don't know why. Who do you think you are? God told the woman. Now, I know every excuse right now. Well, if you're married to the, to the guy I married. Yeah, but I wasn't. You did that. So what happens here? Abraham and Sarah are both in the faith chapters. We need to keep faith in God and believe he can do anything that he's asked us to do. Do you know the church you're sitting in? It was not my idea. I left. I'll talk to you about this in a moment. The best job ever. With a great future in the aircraft industry. I was just one three years experience and he called me away. My wife and kids had insurance for the first time in our married life. We can't have kids. How are we going to pay for them? I don't know. We paid for the first three. Our, no insurance. No dental. We act like that's the worst thing. I always like it when these little boys run around here. Next thing you know, they got they got a big scar here. They got a big dent in their head over here. They got knots all over the back of the head here. And the parents are calling kids. You'll be fine. I love that. No, we need to get him to a a, um, a, wait, a plastic surgeon. He's not going to have a scar on the side of his beautiful face. And here's the dad, honey. Okay. And that kid, you think is going to be a missionary someday? And I'll tell you the truth, we've got some rough boys around here. And I will call them down. And I will straighten them out. And I will tell them what they're going to do or not do around here. 
God, I would rather have him that way. And when I do, I don't need mommy sending daddy to come talk to me. I'm just telling you ahead of time, bad idea on your part. I'm not here to raise your kid, but I am here to teach them and you what I believe God wants us to do. Ma'am, you've got this whole thing out of whack. The kids put pressure on mom on what needs to happen in the home through extended whining, complaining, pouting, till mom, okay, I'll talk to your dad. You messed up. Dad comes home. He just wants to eat, relax, have some quiet. Why? He's been working all day. He has a right to do that. You wait till your father comes home. Why wait? Man, straighten it out. Straighten the problem out. Preacher, I use a plastic spoon and put a pamper around, and I just wore him out. I wish you were my mom. No, I wish you had my mom. My mom had no idea what a pamper was. By the way, you quit letting your kids still use five- and six-year-old pull-ups if you had to wash diaper, uh, cloth diapers out. You'd have put a stop to that back when they were... As soon as they got out of the womb, you ain't using diapers, man. We're going to stop that right now. We will never, as a nation, I don't believe, ever get back to fully in the family, which is what we need. Uh, you'll see a, a thing here. I just came up with it today. You don't change society to change the family. That's backward. You do not change society to change the family. That's backward. Did you understand what I just said? So turn it back around. The family is what's causing this problem out here. And it starts with the Holy Spirit of the home that works in the background, doesn't take credit, points everybody to... Yeah, my husband takes care of everything. Well, that's not true. I take care of things too. What about me? I need some praise. Huh. I heard the Holy Spirit say that. I think it was in John chapter 18. No. He will not speak of himself. And you admitted he does not receive less glory than Jesus Christ. Man, you're the Holy Spirit of the home. see the effects of you. And it bothers you when you don't get the credit for it. You're not supposed to get the credit for it. The Bible said her husband and her children shall rise up to call her blessed. You understand? Good to have you here. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much.